Good afternoon. The Secretary General will uh, preview the meeting uh, of the foreign ministers and then he'll be happy to take your questions. Secretary General. Good afternoon. This is a historic week. Tomorrow we will um, welcome Finland uh, as the 31st member of NATO, making Finland safer and our alliance stronger. We will raise the Finnish flag for the first time here at the NATO headquarters. It will be a good day for Finland security, for Nordic security and for NATO as a whole. Sweden will also be uh, safer as a result. Last year, allies made an historic decision to invite Finland and Sweden to become members of NATO. Since then, we have seen the fastest ratification process in NATO's modern history. And all allies agree that Sweden's succession should be completed quickly. NATO foreign ministers uh, meet at an important moment for our security. Tomorrow, we will hold the NATO Ukraine Commission with Foreign Minister Koleba to address Russia's war aggression and our support to Kyiv. We do not know when this war will end, but when it does, we will need to put in place arrangements so that Ukraine can deter uh, future uh, aggression. And history does not repeat itself. We cannot allow Russia to continue to chip away at European security. I welcome President Zelensky's peace plan, which upholds the principles at the heart of the UN Charter. It provides the foundation for a just and sustainable peace. But there are no signs that President Putin is preparing for peace. He is preparing for more war. That is why we are united in our determination to stay the course and support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Allies have delivered 65 billion euros of military aid. And I welcome that uh, modern battle tanks and other armored vehicles have started to arrive in Ukraine. This can make a real difference on the front lines and allow the Ukrainian forces to liberate more territory. We will discuss how we can step up our support, including by continuing to strengthen Ukraine's armed forces and supporting the transition from Soviet era to NATO equipment and doctrine. Our support is for the long haul. So I expect that ministers will agree to start work on developing a multi-year program for Ukraine. Allies will also discuss threats and challenges in the South, including instability, terrorism, and the growing influence of Iran, Russia, and China. To address all these challenges, it is essential that we invest more in defense. At the Vilnius summit, I expect allies to agree an ambitious new defense investment pledge with 2% of GDP for defense as a floor, not a ceiling. On Wednesday, NATO's Indo-Pacific partners, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, and the Republic of Korea will join us together with the European Union. The consequences of Russia's war against Ukraine are global. And what is happening in Europe today could happen in East Asia tomorrow. So I welcome our partners' strong support to Ukraine, including Japan's recent announcement of contributions to NATO's assistance fund for Ukraine. We will discuss deepening cooperation in areas such as cyber defense, new technologies, and countering disinformation. We will also address China's growing alignment with Russia. Any provision of lethal aid by China to Russia would be a major mistake. At a time when Russia and China are challenging the international order and democratic values, it is even more important that we stand together as NATO allies. 
and with like-minded partners. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions.